Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're trying to do a simple crash course on package managers. So we're trying to explore Linux package man managers, FreeBSD, Windows and the rest. So let's see the first one in this session. So this is going to be on Linux package manager. So what is a package manager? Simply put, a package manager is a software that helps you to manage your packages by helping you to install, uh, uninstall, download, build, and do a lot of things, right? So it's something like this. So in case you want to work with a software, with a package, there are two options. You have to, you can either get a software from source and then build everything from scratch, or you can let a package manager do it for you. So what it's going to do is that the package manager is going to check a repository which has a list of all the different packages that people have already compiled from source or the actual packages then the package manager goes to this particular repository it can be an online server it can be an FTP, ftp server somewhere which the package already built and packaged there then the pack, package manager fetches it from there and then installs it on your system and on your system there is also an index that it looks at to see which link to go to fetch a particular package. So that is the basic understanding behind package managers. So it makes working with softwares and packages very easy, right? So that you don't need to all the time build from, from scratch. So in Linux, there are different families of distribution. So we have the Debian family, we have the Red Hat family, we have the SUSE family, we have the Arc Linux family and the rest. So these are the major ones. So in case you're using a Debian based system, or be Debian based distribution like Ubuntu, Kali, Linux Mint. The package managers we have is DPKG. So D stand for Debian package, PKG is package. We have apt as advanced packaging tool, which is very, very useful, which is built on top of this. And we also have Synaptic, which is a graphic user interface. That is for Debian family. So in this session, we'll be working on Ubuntu. Then in another session, we work on the rest. In case you are also in a family of Red Hat, right? We have Fedora, CentOS, CoreOS. Fedora is more community version open source. And then after it has been iterated over, it is moved to CentOS to be more enterprise version, right? For Red Hat based, like Fedora, CentOS, CoreOS, we have RPM. So the R stands for Red Hat. So Red Hat Package Manager, which is a package manager on these systems to help you manage your packages. There's also DNF and there's also you, right? For OpenSUSE or SUSE, we have the enterprise version, we have the open source version, which is OpenSUSE. This is not under Red Hat, this is like from a German company. And we have RPM, just like Red Hat, because it's similar. We have Zipper, which is also very useful. And we have Yast, which is an, a graphic user interface. Then the final one, the fam final family of Linux distribution is Arc Linux, which we have Pacman. So an example of Arc Linux is Black Arc, Black Linux, and the rest. So let's see how to work with pack package managers from scratch. So by the end of this tutorial, I'll be trying to see all of these things. So let's start with apt. So apt is the modern one and apt get is the previous one, but they all do the same thing, right? This is old and this is new, right? So let's start with apt. So we just go back to your terminal. So let's go back to our terminal. So if I come back to my terminal, this is my terminal and there's nothing here, right? So as I said, from the diagram, there is an index file that your package manager is going to look at to see which repository, which link to go to fetch the package, right? So that can that one can be found here. So if I go back to my system, into my CD, into etc, we have apt, APT, right? And then here you can see that we have some stuff that we have the sources list. So this list is the one that is going to look at and see the links that is supposed to go to, right? And this is also any new one that you add will be added here also, right? So if I go back here and I cut my sources list, you can see that it has all these different links on them. So the dev means it's going to this particular repository. So I can actually check through it and see the one that it's going to. There's one from German that is closest to me when I was doing my installation. There is also one for, right? So I can actually open this one, so copy this and open it inside my browser. So I'll copy this link and open it in the browser. So if I copy it and paste it here, you can see that it's here, right? As you can see, 
we can't see it here right so there's a link and it has ubuntu the different distribution as you can see the current one i'm working this is it's yummy updates which is what we could see here right yummy updates and you have main so you can also go back to what we had which is here let me put this by the side of it which is here you can see that we have the motivate right so there's yummy update if i go here we have motivate we have main which is referring to the motivate is this particular place it's going to have all the various ones there right dbn installer and the different packages so this is one of the links it's going to go to to fetch it right as you can see you can also see the one here if i go back here you can see one from this side so copy for Ubuntu security which is here and you can see the various different sources so your package manager is going to look at this list and then go to this particular place and fetch the package so in case it doesn't find it you have to update it right Perfect. that is a basic understanding so as we have seen this already now if i go into my file here this particular one so cd into my sources list you can see that it has some other ones there different different lists. we have kubernetes we have metasploit steam these were not on the default one but these were the ones i added because i needed to install some packages that are not available right so if i go back to this let's check what is on the kubernetes you can see that it has this particular link and if i click on this copy this one and let's check it here it's going to redirect us to package.cloud.google right so this is where it's going to fetch my kubernetes stuff there right so that is a very very important stuff to you have to know so sometimes in case you can't find the package you just have to update that particular one so let's go out from here and then let's start with apt so we already have apt on my system so to check if it's on the system just go with apt dash dash version and then you are going to start we have apt here right there's also the same option of apt get dash dash version right and this is the same thing right so either you use apt or apt get it's still the same it's not the same specifically but it does the same thing right this is the modern one you're supposed to use and this is the legacy classic one right so most documentation will have apt get but it all does the same thing okay perfect so let's see how to first of all search for a package first so once you go on your system just go with sudo apt then you can just update if i go with update it's going to update not my system but it's going to update my list right this particular list to see if there's any new stuff there right so that's why it's showing all this list the same list we saw here this list that was found here right so it's going to check it and then up see it and update it right so that is checking it perfect so that's why it's very important so when you go to a new system just check it to update that particular list because there may be new things in the database for the repository for this take some time for you to run you have to make sure that you have internet perfect so that is how to update your list right so update your system update your list now after you have gotten it in case you want to install those packages to upgrade the, the ones that are already available you can also see that right now that's finished perfectly now in case i want to upgrade it i can just go back with this upgrade so i go with upgrade it's going to check it and see the ones that i need so only one is to be upgraded zero to be installed and then none is to be removed and then three not upgraded right so in case you wanted to just go with yes and then it's going to go to this link as you see that we needed brief it's going to go to this link for brief fetch it unpack it and then update it right and install it right as you are seeing right so it has finished that is how to work with it. So we have I've seen update, which update your list, upgrade, which picks whatever thing that needs to be upgraded and then goes and fetch it and then install it, right? So so sometimes the best option is just run it like this. Then sudo apt great upgrade, right? So that's most system. So it just update the list and then upgrade it. Perfect. Okay. Now let's move on from here to how do you see all the list of the packages on your system, right? So to see all the list of the packages, go to sudo apt, then 
list. If I go with Studio apt list, it's going to list all the packages on my system. Not on my system, but on the sources list, right? All the packages that's available, not on my system, but available. So I can check the amount of packages that I have, which is my word count, word count dash L. And now it's giving me this amount. So these are all the packages that is available, right? Not on my system, but on the list from the list that it can have access to. Perfect. Now, how do you know the packages that are installed on your system? So just go with this option. So to know the packages that are installed, the same list that we had, because if you go with the list, it listed them. And if there's a package installed, it's going to show it here, right? Installed, automatic, installed, automatic, right? So if you see this installed, smart that means that that package is installed on your system. So I have zip installed on my system. I have uh, Zenity. I have no idea of what this pack package does. So that is how to see the packages that are installed on the system. So you can use this long list, as we saw here, this list, or you can use a different approach with the same option. And so you use the same thing as dash list, right? Installed, I can spell. And this is going to list all the packages that are installed. And you can see from here that we have installed, installed, installed automatic right so that is how to list all the packages on your system so i can make it better so that you see it well let's use terminator and then let's divide it so that you we can have a good picture of what we have so if i go back to the same place we have so sudo apt list it's going to list all the packages that i have i have to use sudo so these are all the packages i have not I have, but that is available for me, right? That I can install. That is going to fetch, that is on the repository. But the ones that I installed are the ones with this option. So in case I want to get only those ones, I'll just go with my sudo apt list dash dash installed. And now these are all the packages that are installed on my system, right? Which is quite a lot. So that is how to do that. So you just go with this option this command wow well, that's quite a lot of packages yeah so just go with this option you can actually count it in case you want to count it so just go with my word count now we have three thousand two hundred and seventeen packages out of the plenty one that we had here which was this one here same thing we do word count dash l so this is 79,000 and this one is 3,000. Right? So that means that my it's not that much on my system, right? So that is how to get the list of packages installed on your system, which is this option, and a list of packages that you have access to that you can install. You can also check the packages that you, you can upgrade that is available for you to upgrade with this option that you can upgrade, so upgradable. Upgrade above only just four, right? I can also list it out. So these are the packages that I need to upgrade, right? Very cool. So that is how to get the list of packages installed, the list of packages that you can upgrade, and the list of packages that you have access to. Now let's see how to also check if a package is installed or not. So in that case, just go with sudo apt, then with the same list. You can also specify that, okay, I want to check if the package is installed. So A for check the package, if it's available on my system, then I'll just go with, let's say, uh, VLC. So now VLC is installed, right? As you can see, VLC is installed. That's why it's showing it here. In case it's not installed, so let's say I want to get the package like player CTO. If it's not installed, it did not show. So the, it's going to list the package, but it did not show whether it is installed or not, right? So this is how to see if a package is installed or not, right? With the dash A, you specify the package. So I want to see if VLC is installed. I want to see if player CTL is installed. If it's installed, you're going to see the package name and then this term here, right? The same way we saw here, perfect. 
Now let's see how to search for packages, right? So to search for packages, go with sudo apt search, right? And then you specify. So I want to search for a package called player CTL. And I was going to search the entire stuff and tell me that, okay, these are the packages that has a term player CTL inside. We have girl player CTL, lib player CTL, and the rest, right? But this is the one I want. So this is one of the ways you can use to search for packages, right? Using search. The old method that you could have used is this option, sudo apt cache, right? It's another method. Then you specify that, okay, I want to search for a package in my cache that is available called player CTL. And now it's going to list it for you, right? So there's another way. So you can use this option here, or you can use this option here, right? So after you have seen that, okay, there's a package I want, how do you get information about it? So to get information about the package, just go with sudo search, no, sudo apt show, then the name of the package, so player CTO. And now this is going to give you a lot of information about it. So there's the name of the package, the version, then the maintainer, the original maintainer, in case you have bugs, where to send it to, the size of the package so that you know what you're going to install and what it depends on which is very very important right and as well as the location of it so this is found on github perfect so that is how to get information about it using this approach you can also use the same thing from here which is you go with search you go with show show pkg then player CTO. that's not another way in case you are using cache right so it's going to do the same thing but this is a more than one Okay, now in case you want to see what the package depends upon before you install it, you just go with this option. So I'll just clear this one from here. So sudo apt depends. Then I'll just specify the name of the package player CTL. And you can see that this package requires all of these things, right? So this is exactly the same thing that was shown here. So lib C, lib glide, and the rest, right? So that is how to see the package that it depends upon. So sometimes in case it doesn't work, you have to check these ones and then install these ones individually. But your package manager make it easy for you. And it's also suggesting some other packages for you, like which is quite interesting, like recommendations. So these are the ones there. Very cool. So that is how to get information about the package now let's see how to install the package itself. So there are three ways you can install the package. You can install it straight away, you can download it, or you can download it and then build it from, from scratch, right? So let's see the first one. So we have seen the package, we want to download it. So sudo apt, this is the first way, apt, install, then player CTL. So this package isn't available, now I've installed it. It's going to tell me that okay this is a package that is going to install it on my system perfectly for us so now player ctl is available if i go to player ctl that is version now i have player ctl installed on my system that is how to install a package on your system with player ctl you can also uninstall it in case you don't want it so we already have the version in case i don't want it i can just go with this remove so remove then it's going to remove it we tell that okay do you want to remove it yes then it's going to remove it from my system so it's no more there so if i go back with this it's not available so no such file or directory and you see that it's added automatically to your path which is very useful there's another way you can also remove a package using the purge option which is let's install it again this one installs the package and this one removes the package but in case you want to remove the package together with not just a binary but also any configuration file that it came with you just go with sudo apt right then you can just go with purge so in case you want to see the list you can just go with help we have remove there's auto remove we have reinstall install show search list you can also purge it, so we can just go with apt, I think it's, yeah, for the old one, get purge, 
it's another way of removing it. Then the name of the package is so player CTO. C CTO. This is going to remove the package, the binary, as well as any configuration it has. Right? A clean slate, right? So this is it's going to purge the entire system of this package together with everything that it it touched, like the configurations. That is how to remove a package from your system. Now let's see another way you can also download a package on your system without installing it straight away. So let's go to my desktop and I'll just go to my tutorials. Yeah. So inside here, there's nothing here. So in case I want to download a package, the actual package itself without installing it, I can just go with sudo apps, then download, then I can specify the package to player CTL. And now this is going to go to the link. It's going to this particular link. Then it's going to fetch the package for us, right? So if I check it here, you can see that now it's available. Initially, there was nothing here, but now the package is there in the format of a deb for Debian. And I can pick this one and install it. I can extract from it, modify it, and then build it from scratch. So in case I want to install this one now, I can just go with this. So sudo apt, right, install dot backslash is supposed to be executable. That's why I'm bringing the backslash. Then I'll specify the name of the package. So this is how to install it. So don't forget this, except you make it executable, right? This is very important at the origin now. So perfect. And now it's going to install. So there is another way you can also install it. So this option downloads a package like in this particular format. And then with this, you can install it. You can also get the package. So let's try another one. So I want to download, let's say VLC, which is here, right? I have my VLC. I can now unpack this and let's say modify it and do whatever I want to do. So let's say I want to modify this one. I can just extract it. So DPKG, Deb, we'll be doing this one as in the next session. Then I'll specify a directory. So let's create a directory called, let's say VLC temp, right? Yeah, and then I'll just go back to my location. So dpkg deb, Debian, then dash R, I want to extract everything there, right? So VLC, I want to extract, and then I want to put it inside this directory that I have, which is my VLC temp perfect so now if i go back to my vlc temp you can see that it has the debian and all of these files there right if i go to my debian it has some files there some things i have no idea if i go to my user it has some things i have no idea about right the library itself with all the stuff there and now i can build it from scratch right i can rebuild it i can modify it and then build it from scratch so i can Go back again. The same thing that we had here. I can basically modify it and I can build it from scratch using this option. With DPKG, we'll be going deeper into it in the next session. Dash B for build, then the name of the directory, so VCL, which is where I am already. So let's get out from here and then let's go with DPKG, right? Dash step, dash R, and then I can just go with my the particular one so tempo the directory then i can actually build it right i can build it so this is extraction this is building then i can give it a new name so let's give it a new name let's say my vlc dot deb now that's finished so we see that we have my vlc dot deb and i can install this my vlc dot deb right so that is how to work with apt which is a very very powerful stuff you can also get the actual source without the depth without this particular option using my sudo apt get source then the name of the package so let's say i want axi or let's say i want the engineers or something so in case it's available it's going to download the source package right but now i think it's not available so that's why you're not getting it and you can also build it. So that is something very simple. You can also use this option here. So dash dash build. 
to build it from source, right? So source, then in case you have it there, you can also build it. So I do not have it, but you can build it. So VLC temp, yeah, I don't think it's possible to build it now because it's not the right, the right format. So that is how to use apt to do a lot of things. So you have seen how to install, uninstall, download and build from start. So thank you for watching. If you have any question or contribution, you can put it in the comments below. Let me know your opinion about this video and see you in the next session. Stay blessed. Adios. Bye. One more time before you go in, in case you want to clean your system with apt, you can just go with sudo apt. We have clean. This is going to clean your system from all stuff and give you space. Or you can also go with apt auto clean and this is going to remove all the archives that were not removed so all the other stuff that is left behind from other packages and it's auto clean right very cool but you should be very careful about using these ones <laughs> yeah but it's useful functions so thank you for watching see you another time so in the next session we'll be trying to check on on dpkg right which we saw some in the end and then we move on to the rest bye